Hello everyone, today I will be showing you how you can create a horizontal scroll effect on your page. This is just a bunch of items that I have been able to align horizontally and I'm able to scroll using my vertical scroll while the page is actually scrolling horizontally. So let's just go ahead and get started. I've already created my HTML base. I have a main container, a slider container and then an inner slider. And then inside of those three containers I have my actual panels. I've given them a class of item and then inside of those items I can essentially put whatever I would like. I just kept it very simple for the purpose of this tutorial. Inside of my CSS, I only have some resets. So the margins and paddings have been set to zero. And then the box sizing is set to border box. And my JavaScript is empty. So let's go ahead and check this out on the browser. So in the beginning, it will look like this, which is totally fine. Let's go ahead and add some styling to everything so that it looks a bit better. So the first thing that I'm going to tackle is my main. For my main container, I'm giving it a position of fixed and then setting the top to zero the left to zero and then giving it a width of 100 percent and a height of 100 vh what this will do is it will give my main element a fixed position so nothing will change for now the second element will be my slider this one needs to be set to a position of absolute in re relation to its parent which is the main and then i'm repeating some of the steps so i'm setting the top to zero the left to zero as well and then i'm giving it a mean width of 100 percent like so and lastly setting the height to 100 percent and this is all in relation to the main it will just inherit these properties for my slider inner i'm setting the position absolute again my top to zero my left to zero i want this to have a width of 100 vw viewport width and a height of 100 percent to have my elements set horizontally i'm going to use the flex box so display flex to set it horizontally and then i'm just going to justify the content to the start so now you will see that everything is showing in a row but nothing has been spaced out yet the reason why these elements are not being set to the width of our viewport is because flex is making sure that these elements can fit inside of our viewport so inside of the item which is the inner element inside of our slider inner i need to specify that i want the flex to do nothing so flex is set to none now if i check it back nothing is gonna happen yet but we can set our position to relative and then give them a width of 100 percent so that it inherits the width of the parent and for the height i'm gonna set it to 100 vh so now you will see that my elements kind of disappear and that's just because we don't have the scroll effect yet but we will see them in a second this is a good sign let me just finish this so I'm just going to add a background, a background color. Let's see something light. So I'm going to also position my elements uh, with flexbox so that I can center everything. Justify content center, line items center. To make my panels easy to see, I'm just going to add a border. So and then this is one panel. Now that we have all of our CSS, let's just jump into our JavaScript. So for the JavaScript, the first thing I need to do is create some variables. So I'm just going to do it very quickly first things first i need my items so i'm just using a document query selector document query selector all and then i'm selecting all of the elements that contain the class item I'm making sure to use the right ticks for it i'm also going to need a slider so document dot query selector and then inside of brackets inside of quotation marks dot slider i will also need three variables which i will be using to store things in so the first thing would be my slider width i also need my item width and finally the current position of my scroll i'm just gonna shorten it to current pause and i will set this to zero because initially we start with zero scroll Voila. I need to create a couple of functions. So the first one will be the function init just to initialize some values. So this one takes no arguments. So I can leave that empty. And then inside of it, I'm going to use the slider width to calculate the current width of my slider by just using the get bounding client rect function. And inside of that, I'm going to select the width like so. I could actually also do this over here and then I don't need to do it inside of the function so it, it depends on what you want to do the second thing would be my item width so this one it's a calculation of the slider width divided by the items length and that will actually give me the width of one individual item 
and then I will apply this to my body element to my body element so I'm just selecting my document.body.style.height and in here I will do a bit of a calculation so I'm going to use the template literal to create my variable and inside of this I'm just going to type slider width minus and then between brackets the window dot inner width minus the window dot inner height and this will give me the exact value that I need to set my body height. I need a second function to set my slider width and I know it's already set but when I resize my viewport I would like for my slider width to also adjust. This is why I'm using this quick function. So in here I'm just creating a variable for the total width. So I'm starting with zero and then I create a for loop to loop through my elements. So for every item. What I want to do is keep adding the offset width of my item to the total width. Oh, I'm actually missing some brackets. Like so. And then after this loop, I'm going to add this width to my slider to keep it updated. So again, using a template literal, the total width in pixels. To make all of this work, we're going to make use of a recursive function. I'm going to call it animate. Inside of this, I'm going to call the functions that we created. So first of all, I'm going to initialize everything and then set the slider width as well. What's very crucial in this function is that we are constantly updating the current position and this will be our window dot scroll Y. So to do this, we just select our slider, select its style and the transform value. And then in here again with the template literal, I'm going to translate the X position to be the current position. To make everything recursive, I'm going to call the request animation frame function and inside of it, I'm going to call the function that I'm uh, writing right now. It's called animate. And as you can see, so this is the name of a function and it is essentially calling itself. And that this is why it is a recursive function. So it's kind of like a loop, an infinite loop. It will call itself over and over and over again. To finish off, I just need to call the function and check the website. Hmm, something is missing. Let's check that we have written everything correctly. Let me put this back in here because maybe that was not the best option. Voila, there you go. So the scroll is scrolling, but my elements are not moving at all. So let's see what's up. Also, I'm actually defining this again, so that shouldn't be the case. But I don't think that's what's making this not work. Oh, I'm actually missing an R over here. So I think that's it. Yes. Um, so it's moving in the wrong direction. This means that we actually need a negative value over here. So I'm just going to add a minus. And that should fix the problem. There you go. So now I have something that can scroll horizontally while keeping the natural behavior of the scroll on a web page. And as a bonus, when you resize your viewport, it actually recalculates the values and the widths for everything. So that's super neat. This means that you can use this on a mobile device as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, and this is pretty much it. So it was just about 30 lines of code. Um, very easy. You don't need any kind of framework to do this, uh, especially when you're just building very simple pages. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next one. Bye.